So this video was supposed to come out before the Pokemon Splatfest started, just so that everyone knew all the information that they needed to know, so that they could win the Splatfest. But I got sick day of, so I couldn't record anything, and I was sick throughout the entirety of the Splatfest, so I couldn't even release the information like halfway through or whatever. So I thought I hey, might as well just play it, see how me and Team Water will go with all this knowledge in the back of my head, and I think I was onto something. So in this video, I'm going to tell you everything that I found out to help increase my chances of winning the Splatfest, and I'm just going to share it all to you. So let's start off by discussing how Splatfests work. When the Splatfest is announced, it begins the sneak peek phase, where you can pick your team and earn conch shells by leveling up your catalogue. Then, when the Splatfest begins, it goes into the Splatfest phase, where you can play open and pro matches to get your clout as high as possible. Then halfway through the Splatfest, it turns into the halftime phase, where the team in the lead has to defend and try color battles. Now how does all of this affect point distribution? Winning the sneak peek gets your team 10 points, having the most amount of votes will net your team another 10 points, if the team has the highest clout in open battles, you will get 15 points, and having the highest clout in pro battles will get you 10 points. So how do we optimize this for the highest chance to win? Once the Splatfest has been announced, you need to look on social media like Twitter and Discord and in the in-game plaza to see which team is getting the most support and you want to make sure you choose that team. It's okay to wait like a day to get more accurate results. Then you want to play as much as you can to try and level up your catalogue to get con shells. I've found that both Turf War and NRP have around the same efficiency, so play the mode you want to. If this goes well, then your team should win the votes and the sneak peek, which will get you 20 points before the Splatfest actually begins, which is a huge head start. Now once the Splatfest actually starts, you have a choice on which mode you want to play, open or pro. Open allows you to play with friends, and pro is solo only. In both of these modes, you have a chance to encounter 10 times, 100 times, and 333 times battles. It's super important that you try really hard on these battles because if you win, then you get what's called a festival shell. Now the game doesn't really tell you much about what a festival shell is, it just kind of gives you it and then expects you to know, but what a festival shell is, is that the more festival shells that the overall team gets, then it's more likely that 100 times and 333 times battles will occur. 333 times battles are really important because you'll get the clout equal to winning 333 battles. Some people will only play 100 battles of Splatfest overall, and even that might be stretching it, so imagine winning 333 in just one battle. Now at the halfway mark, the team with the most clout across open and pro matches will be declared as the leader, and they have to try and defend in tricolor battles while the other team try and make a comeback. Point scoring in this mode is very interesting. Let's say Team A is defending and Team B and C are attacking. If Team B wins, Team C still reaps a little bit of the clout from the tricolor battle. But if Team A wins, then they get the same amount of clout as if Team B won, so it is really one-sided towards the attacking teams, which makes sense because it is a comeback mode. Remember that tricolor battles go towards the open league, which is worth 15 points, so it's very important that the defending team actually plays tricolor, because it's worth more and if they win open, then it's very likely that they will go on to win the entire Splatfest, which we saw with Team Water. Now for some general tips about Splatfest. Don't DC just because you're losing at 2 minutes. Turf War doesn't matter until the last 30 seconds where all you have to do is just win one team fight, and that can change the entire game. At the start of Turf War, don't spend a minute in spawn inking it. Instead, every time you get splatted, ink a little bit more of spawn to charge your special, then go in, and if everyone does that, then your spawn will be easily painted. And remember, it's just a stupid splatfest, just have fun, it's not that serious. You're only gonna get three more sea snails for being on the winning team. So don't take my guide super seriously. So those are all of the Splatfest tips that I have. Make sure you guys like and subscribe and have fun out there.